Alright, testing out my new mic. Uh, Binding of Isaac Afterbirth just came out. Decided to. I already got Lilith unlocked. I'm gonna try for a run with her on normal mode real quick just to get her, uh, you know, down. Item rooms are no longer completely free. And because of Northern Lion, I do know um, about Lilith. I do know that her little item up there duplicates any kind of companion. And I don't know if it's just companions or. Companions and oh wait no 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 it does orbitals too because I believe this is one of the good ways to get fourth level uh, uh, meat boy and fourth level okay. by getting it and then finding a bunch of batteries and then just spamming this over and over which I like. and I still have yet to get Bandage Girl I ended up getting before I even knew it was a thing. Well, it just kind of sucked that I just bought this DLC because I hadn't even got the original rebirth. I'm still missing like two or three items. So now it's going to be even harder with an like, even more item pool. Sacrifice some people. Oh. Okay, so item pickups. Oh, Red health. So item pickups do affect your. Any kind of bolt, like. My first thought when I saw um, Northern Iron play this character was that uh, that one challenge in Rebirth, I can't remember what it's called, but you basically just have a whole bunch of like companions around you and then they shoot for you. It was pretty terrible in my opinion. Very difficult. I do like Lilith's design though. Very, very interesting. I'm not really, uh. I guess that solves that room. I'm not really versed in the, you know, the whole biblical stuff, so. Puberty. I can never remember if this is. Mom's Pearl or Curse Shot, so I'm just not even gonna pick it up. Oh wait, item pedestal. Trinkets don't show up on item pedestal, right? So that would always be cursed shot. Yeah. And I'm in the camp of um curse shot is terrible. I'm, I'm just not good enough to just not get hit, like, alone without having to worry about only getting hit if I'm not charging. And is this... Lilith's hitbox doesn't extend to her companion, because that would really suck. That would be like the Isaac's heart, which, in my opinion, is very terrible. I hear a lot of people are, you know, defend it and say that like it's pretty, it's pretty good because you're able to just use your own body as like a shield. But like I said, not good enough to have the to be able to sit there and like strategize where I'm standing. On, right? The only reason why I got all the items unlocked by the lost is because I 
freaking scum the whole upload safe. Although, I did beat, uh, all the way up to Isaac with the Lost without getting hit before I found out about that whole uh, save feature thing. So that's probably my greatest achievement. And be oh. Maybe I'll check out later, but I know one of the main things people wanted with this Afterbirth... I think it's called Afterbirth, right? Rebirth. Yeah. With this Afterbirth upgrade is a quick reset. And I know for a fact that I would love it too. Because... I would definitely be more inclined to do lost runs if there was a quick reset. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't reset until like you know I got Holy Mantle or something like that. Like I would just reset until I got a you know a decent starting height. Any kind of damage upgrade, any kind of like speed upgrade. I wouldn't really expect to get too far, but if I did get some kind of like holy mantle or whatever, I would definitely give it a serious attempt to try to get as far as possible. I have beaten Mom's Heart, I think. Yeah, Mom's Heart on hard mode with every character. Well, except Lilith now. To unlock all the babies, because I believe those count for secrets, and I was going for the Platinum God, because on the original Rebirth game, the only trophies I have left to unlock are Platinum God and True Platinum God. I've gotten all the other ones. And I do really, really like going after trophies, um, but only for games that I really enjoy. Like, I'm not going to be playing, for example, like, I'm not going to, hell, I haven't even completed it, but if I ever did complete it, I wouldn't be trying to get all the trophies for a game like uh, Two Worlds 2 or something like that, because the game's just not very good. But for, like, Mass Effect, that series, I've platinumed all those, I've platinumed uh, Saints Row the third. I do not believe Saints Row 2 has trophies, or else I would definitely give that a serious attempt. And Saints Row 4 is just freaking ridiculous in terms of platinuming. I'm I'm close. I got a lot of the trophies, I believe. But I don't. I, I just I don't think I'll probably ever end up platinuming that. Mostly because I just feel like it's a lot harder than you. In a lot of aspects, it's a lot easier to get some of the trophies. Like thing. But I'm just gonna put it down. Uh, but but in in a term, Saints Row 3 didn't really have as much of a hard challenge. Because some of those challenges I just like I think like the tanks one tank ones I just can't get uh, was it gold or is there one of them? It's been a while. I basically like played that game, got all the collectibles and just haven't really played since. But I do end up. I, 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 you know, I most likely will probably do a let's play of the Saints Row series because it is one of my favorite series. I would have to say. <laughs> it's funny because a lot of people say that they don't like the direction that the Saints Row series went after two, but. In my opinion, I like it. I mean, Saints Row 2 was, I mean, it was awesome, but it's practically just like a And with 
the direction that GTA was going, with the whole like super serious um, aspect. What are those black groups do? Actually, I don't even know. It seems to be making a dark hit. But um But with the direction that GTA decided to go with with the whole like super serious uh, darker tone with some like small funny elements that were really realistic. Uh, for example, in GTA 5, spoiler, uh, when Trevor is meeting Franklin and he trips over his fence, you know, stuff like that. Like it's it's just humor that's completely realistic and plausible. Whereas Saints Row 4 decided to go with, like Looney Tunes. And I actually appreciate that a lot because I find it a good laugh. You know, games don't always have to be serious. Games are a, an escape for reality for a lot of people. So to always expect games to be super hyper realistic is kind of ridiculous. Am I glad that GTA is this like super realistic thing? Sure. I mean, because there's not really any other thing like it. But. Does that make Saints Row worse? Or GTA worse because the other one does something better than the other? No. One thing Saints Row do needs to bring back, even though in 4 there was really no point in ever using a car. The. What the hell is that? You feel her love? Well, it's new, I'm gonna pick it up. Um. Is when you're driving. What's it called? Forty-eight hour energy. The, uh, that thing where, like, the car basically just goes forward at the same speed. Um, either of these would be good to pick up, but I'm not sure which one I should do. Do followers? Do companions? Uh. Damage multiply with you? I don't think they do. Unless Lilith is different because that's your only form of. You know what? I'm just gonna skip it and maybe hope for like a. What's it called? A, an angel room. But anyway, like I was saying, cruise control, just remember. In GTA, or no, in Saints Row 2. They had this feature called cruise control, just like real life cruise control, where you just um, push it and you'll stay the same speed and it'll continuously go forward at that speed, allowing you to aim, you know, more accurately or while, while you know, aim more accurately while you're trying to shoot. And, uh, and I always thought that that was a genius feature. If you really think about it, like, oh yeah, why wouldn't? like GTA do that more often. It makes perfect sense. I mean, they expect you to sit here and drive and shoot people at the same time, and yet... When you could just do a cruise control feature. Like... Far Cry 4, I believe, had a cruise control feature. Where you would set up a waypoint, and then you would just drive on the road and then push it, or something like that, and then it would automatically... Uh, really terrible. Um, only about 14 minutes. You know, I'll do another one. Uh, and it would take you right to your your way. It would follow the roads, but it would take you to your waypoint. I, I forgot that this guy didn't automatically have a three shot. Wow. The post good run blues. But yeah, it would take you right to your... I've yet to find a way to clear that room without getting hit. Probably because I'm dumb, but... It is what it is. Yeah, and it would take you... Ooh, freeze. It would take you right to your... Waypoint following the roads. And I always thought that that was a brilliant, brilliant way to kind of have like fast travel without having fast travel. Even though I do believe that that game had fast travel anyway. Because I used it all the time. I would set up my waypoint to the next mission. 
hard. Just get on a road, push forward, like set up the, the cruise control basically, the auto drive. So it would take me to my destination. And then like go get a drink or go to the bathroom. And then when I come back, I can go a lot closer. And not have to worry about my car going into the future. Although that feature did have one kind of downside. And that was if there was another person and the road was small enough, if there was another person coming from the other direction from you, um, you would basically get like hit off the road and then it would completely mess up the whole like auto drive feature. Which, you know, really sucks. I mean, you put it on there just so. You wouldn't have to drive while you could go get a drink or something. And come back and you're like laying in a ditch dead because your car flipped over and you blew up. And there was a car coming from the other direction and neither one of you would have to move out of the way. Are we getting a Far Cry 5 now that I think about it? I know we got Primal, which I do love. I I own it. I don't know if I'll be doing a Let's Play of it. It's possible. Um, the one bad thing about it is the whole... I mean, it's kind of cool, but at the same time... I don't really like the fact that all of the dialogue is in their made-up language. It really kind of... It really kind of ruins my opinion. I should only take a shot. It kind of ruins, um... The whole feeling of just playing the game. Now instead of just playing the game, you're like reading the game. And it's the same thing when I'm watching like anime. I hate I hate watching stuff subtitles because I feel like I'm looking at the bottom of the screen and reading the entire time instead of actually enjoying the screen. And that's how I feel sometimes when I'm playing Far Cry Primal. Although it is fun to run around, you know, as a caveman spearing people and clubbing people to death, but. I bet there's some people out there who, who agree with me with the whole the subtitles kind of ruin the experience of hearing something in your own language. Because I don't care what people say, being able to hear something in your language and just understand it allows you to view more of what's going on. Because your eyes aren't glued to the bottom of the screen reading words the entire time. It, it's actually kind of funny because my one of my favorite movies of all time is in Japan. It's called uh, Ring of Curse. Maybe. Anyway, it's it's practically like a, a modern rendition of um, the ring, where oh, that is new. I don't know what it does. Oh, nice. Especially since I have freeze. Oh, that's that's sick. But oh, one eye. That's that's new. Oh, Like I said, it's a modern rendition of the movie The Ring, where instead of it being like a VHS tape or whatever, it's kind of like a um, like a cell phone novel. And if someone reads it, they end up, um, you know, the whole ring of her set for like seven days or whatever. They end up. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's sounds kind of dumb, a cell phone novel, but that's more towards the end, like how they get there and like you actually see the creation of the evil cell phone novel, like you actually get to spend time with the chick who's killing people and it's 
I think it's a really fresh take on the whole. I can't believe I'm gonna have to skip this freaking. Anyway, it's like a fresh take on the whole um, evil spirit type thing. You're like, yeah, but why is she an evil spirit? Why? Like, I, I don't want to wait until the sixth movie in the franchise to figure out why she's killing me. And plus, I really like all the actors in the movie. I, I think they did a very, very wonderful job. Especially the chick who plays the evil chick. And like I said, it's a Japanese movie, so um, English subtitle only. So there's no... There's no dub or anything, which is a huge, huge disappointment in my opinion, but completely understandable. I don't think live action really translates well for dub because it just doesn't feel right. Like one of my other favorite movies of all time, um, Kung Fu Fury or something like that, I think is what it's called. I don't know, I'm probably not sounding too sincere right now, like, oh yeah, this is my favorite movie, and yet I don't know what it's called, but it's just been a really long time. Anyway, uh, I think it's called, like, Kung Fu Fury, or whatever, it's, it's directed by Stephen Chow, He's the, he plays in it, he made, um, Shaolin Soccer, another brilliant movie, would be one of my tops if it was, is it Dallas? I'm not sure. Anyway, Kung Fu Fury or something. It uh, you you have two options of watching it. You can watch it with the um, English subtitles. Ah. You, my TV is kind of dark. I don't know how dark it looks on the recording. I'm looking over here on my laptop right now. It actually looks pretty bright compared to what I'm looking at. Uh, but anyway, he. It's like this, it's the story of this guy who wants to become like a Yakuza or whatever. Or no, not a Yakuza, in Japanese. Um, like basically in the Chinese Mafia. And... Triad? Is that? Whatever. Anyway, he... So he tries his hardest and he was like, he wanted to become like a Kung Fu guy when he was little, but then he got like super complicated. And the whole story is about him coming to terms with, like, not being a, such a fucking douchebag. And, um... Oh shit, oh, oh, I can't, I can't see anything. I can't, like, I literally can not see them when they're not there. I don't know where they are. Vision, Answers. Abundance. Change. Pure. Oh, I had Curse of the Darkness? Well, I wasn't even paying attention. Uh, I think I'm going to take Abundance for now. Then... Oh, wait, no, I can go into the item room. There. So, yeah, he, he basically just comes to terms with stop being such a douchebag and not wanting to be, like, a criminal. And I would recommend it to anybody. It's it's brilliant. It's great storytelling. Great. I honestly do not want that. So I'm going to use Per throw. Per throw. Oh, that's new. For me. Wait. Is it? Wasn't there an item in Rebirth that did that? And it just looked like a pair of glasses? Whatever. What do we got going on? I do want to go to the shop. I do have enough money. Yeah, I'd recommend that movie to anybody. It's it's brilliantly done. Oh, that's new. I gotta buy it. I have to buy it, even if I'm not gonna use it. Oh, that's sick. How would that work with with brimstone? Would it shoot off the end, or would it shoot off, like, the entire thing? Or would it just not work with Brimstone? Oh, You know what? This this item would make Tiny Planet phenomenal. 
which is funny because the only thing in my opinion that makes Tiny Planet even usable is Brimstone. Um, and I don't know if that's just because in general the item sucks, because I, I don't know, like I can't I can't speak for other people. I don't know how that item's treated you guys, but for me personally, not very good. And that one challenge run where uh, Tiny Planet is one of the items that you use. It's really, 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 really it took me a long time to do that one. Oh, sacrificial dagger. Well, I have no keys and no bomb. I could, you know, I'm gonna go to the curse room. No point not to. Um. I actually can't remember what I was saying. So I'm gonna go back to that movie. It's it's a really cool movie. It it kind of combines like the thing on the back of the box. It says like um, your favorite action Bruce Lee movie mixed with Looney Tunes or something like that. And I think that's a pretty good explanation. In my uh, it's very it's very over the top and cartoony with a lot of the violence, but the action scenes are freaking crazy. Anybody who's seen it would. Uh, agree with me. I, I I hope so. During that scene where those two people leave the village, uh, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Or is it three? I think it's. I think it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's three because one gets taken out like right away, and then. The other two um, actually are in the fight. Okay, yeah, so I think it's three. But yeah, for anybody who's seen that movie, you probably agree with me that that scene was three. The fight, all of all of the styles of fighting and stuff, is very unique. It all feels very powerful. So you're not just watching it thinking like, oh, yeah, whatever, it's just a fight. No, you definitely feel like it's it's a legit like Super Saiyan battle-ish type thing, which is kind of really hard to achieve because making a character seem powerful and then making a fight seem powerful, in my opinion, are two completely different things. Um, my example, uh, like the movie Unleashed with Jet Li great example of making a character seem powerful. Powerful. I think of a scene where the fight is I can't really think of an exact example right now, but um, good things to look for for what I'm talking about of a scene that makes a fight look powerful is any kind of disturbance in maybe like the place that they're fighting because of what they're fighting. For example, say like two people are fighting and one person misses the other person and punches a wall and the wall just gets completely destroyed. Like, it doesn't just make that person look powerful, it makes the fight look powerful because you saw that same dude take a punch like that like a minute ago and yet he's still standing. And yet, that one punch that just missed him was strong enough to just completely destroy that wall. Ah. And I think that's one of the reasons why I ended up not being a huge fan of Loki. Marvel Cinematic Universes so far. I haven't seen Civil War. I, I, I don't even know if I'm in it. I, I doubt it, but whatever. Um, like, he's portrayed as this really powerful, like, trickster, but at the same time. What is Jared? Oh, buttons. I never felt like he was that powerful. They always talked him up as powerful, but then didn't really back it up in any sort of significant way. The one few times we saw him fight was with 
Thor and well, not really wasn't really a fight with the Hulk, but with Thor, and he he won that by like stabbing. Him. Help! You know, like it's down. Like, ooh, anybody can do that shit. grab before my invincibility went out. I'd say at least the middle row and maybe like two of the other ones. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine for a spirit heart. Okay. Oh, I could have grabbed more. I don't know how many moves I have left or I just pulled it. Funny because uh, I actually got back into this because of Northern Lion, uh, Northern Lion, and he only plays the PC version on the stream. So uh, he always calls that item the spacebar item, and that's what I always want to call it. Is that Isaac's heart? Screw that. Um, so he always calls it the spacebar item, and that's what I want to instinctively call it. I do that all the time. Anyway, I always want to instinctively call it the spacebar item, but I'm playing on the PS4, so I've been trying to call it the L2 button. It just doesn't have maybe maybe active item. Oh, that sounds that sounds good. Active item. Would that make my guy stronger? Or would it just make him bigger? I think it only makes him bigger, right? Yeah, because it only works for what? Like orbitals? And independence, I guess. But, but it only just makes him bigger. It doesn't really increase their power, right? I'm gonna go back and buy that spirit of heart. I'm at a half a red one. Wait, why do I have Guppy's collar? I was about to say, why am I, um. Why do I. Oh, oh Guppy. Thank you. The amount of times I do that is actually really ridiculous. I, I don't even, like, I don't even know why I do it, like, like, I just walk forward without even thinking. I guess I'm just not really used to, used to it, I guess. I mean, even though I've been playing this for a long time now, I mean, not super long, but long. Oh man, I just skipped what that guy was called. I'll have to look at the footage later. This is completely new, I don't know. I think I fought him in uh, greed mode. But other than that, I don't know anything. anything else. I could try for a secret room, but I don't really know the rules anymore. I mean, there's so many areas where it's surrounded by three. It could be any single one of those. And then these like skinny rooms, I don't know how that messes up the dynamic. So I think I'm just going to leave. Yeah. Oh, is there a score for non-daily challenge runs? Interesting. I don't know, I can... I can guarantee you right now that I'm never going to be one of the people who like who just focus on their score and try to get like as high a score as possible because that, that really just doesn't matter to me. I just want to have fun, unlock stuff, find new stuff. If I find out later that like maybe one of the items is reliant on being unlocked by getting a certain score in a run or something, then yeah, I'll probably end up trying to get a good score. But it'll never be something that takes over 
my playing of this game. You'll never, you'll never see me like, be like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, try to get as high a score as possible today, and just rush through it and make a whole bunch of stupid mistakes just because I'm looking for score. I mean, I'm going to be making tons of mistakes, not be because, you know, I'm trying to get a good score, but because I'm not very good. And I don't even know if I have the D4 unlocked. I've been I've been blowing these things up for like the last six or seven runs, but I it, it hasn't it hasn't said it's unlocked. I don't even know if I have it unlocked. Oh wow! Are there holes there? I can't tell. Maybe I should raise the like the brightness because I can barely see. But you know, it's an added challenge. I mean, I just I would have screwed myself over hardcore in that room if I if I didn't have freeze effect. Um, but yeah, I don't even know how I would check to see if I have it unlocked because I think it only shows up on the item things once you've gotten it. And it doesn't show that I've got, like, I, I haven't gotten it. I know that. But I don't know if I have it unlocked to get it. If that makes sense. Because I know you get it by blowing up 30 slot machines or something. If that's what the, um, the Platinum God website cheat sheet thing that I was using is anything. I also need to get Godhead. I have it unlocked, I just haven't gotten it yet. Mostly because I, I don't really have the patience, especially without a quick start button, to constantly um, restart an Isaac run until I get a good first floor item that speeds up the pace a bit. Because it's it's ridiculously slow trying to get you know to the third floor which is your first thing to the angel room unless you get lucky and get um, that's not good. unless you get lucky and get a joker card on the first floor but yeah it it's just harder to get to that point with Isaac because ah. Sorry, I'm just trying to concentrate this little thing like not having my shot be right in front of me like from my my body is it's really throwing off my like strategies and stuff. But Yeah, yeah, I just don't have the patience to slowly go through the levels as base Isaac with the with the D6 um, until I get powerful enough for it to get like fast enough because it definitely takes at least half the time to get to that point with Azazel, but it sucks because Azazel um, doesn't have the D6, which would make it much easier to get the items that I'm looking for because I could if I if it's not the item I'm looking for I just re-roll and that like I don't know statistics wise but I would think that that like doubles my chances at least maybe or I know it definitely increases my chances of finding the items I'm looking for but uh, maybe not double um, and I don't think like, like the items like the D100, I believe, just re-roll everything about your run. Uh, and I don't think it can re-roll you into an item that you haven't already gotten once. I think it only pulls out items that you've at least... Oh, thank you, Lord and Savior. This is the second time I've ever gotten it, by the way. The first time I basically like f tried to farm it while I was trying to get other items to show up. I would basically just go into every shop I could find 
to get that item. And eventually I found it and ended up completely wrecking in a good way, wrecking the run I was on. Because obviously every single game being slowed down is freaking top tier overpowered. I'm not even taking chances. This is uh Oh, it's a small room, this isn't good. Although, if there was any boss that I would want to fight in a small room, it would be Loki. Because, let's face it, Loki, Loki is like the bottom of the bottom in terms of difficulty when it comes to bosses. Hell, he's about as easy as freaking Monstro. Yeah, yeah, I don't take that back. He's easy as Monstro. Hell, I think Monstro 2 is harder than freaking Loki. Okay. Are those black ones things I have to kill? Come on. Oh, yes. Yes, they are. Oh, so is that a new enemy type, or am I just stupid and never noticed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's actually really exciting seeing all this new stuff. I mean... I know the PC people have been able to see all this crap for freaking ever, like six months, I think. Us um, console players have had to wait before we can even get the the uh, the DLC that. I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna take chances. Wait like six months for the DLC that the PC have had. You know that's. Like, I understand why a lot of people would be angry. Um, me, personally, I've only been into Isaac for, like, the last... Maybe, like, a month or two. Um, I bought it a long time ago on the PS4. And, obviously, by a long time ago, I meant just a time that isn't very recent because the game hasn't been out on the PS4 for too long, I don't think. But yeah, I bought it on the PS4 and played it for a while. It got to the point where I unlocked every character except the Lost and Blue Baby, I believe. And then I just stopped playing because I just wasn't a fan. The whole... It was just too hard. I, I wasn't really as much of a, I guess you call a serious gamer at the time. I mainly just played games for story I just liked random fan turning on probably not good for the audio anyway uh, I mostly just played the games for you know the story I wait the stopwatch only worked when you get hit that's not how it worked in rebirth oh that's terrible I wasn't. I didn't even notice. Like I, I completely forgotten I had stopwatch because none of the rooms were slowed down. Is it? Did they really nerf the stopwatch? Like yeah, a lot of people I guess say things like, "Oh, I don't want a super overpowered item," but why not? It's not like it shows up all the time. Like, having stupid overpowered items in the game makes it more fun. You know how long it took me to fucking unlock that thing? Getting 99 cents? Like, I know it wouldn't have taken as much as long as if... Like, if I had decided to just grind it, you know. But I didn't, you know. I, I unlocked it through playing the game. Slow and, you know, cautiously by just putting in money when I could. And to know that they freaking nerfed it to only activate when you get hit, that's re that's so dumb. See, this would definitely be a room that I would want my active item on. Unfortunately, I don't know how many rooms I have. Or else I would totally use it. See, the only way I can see the stopwatch being good, like, yeah, I understand, it's still good, it's still great, but 
for it to even matter, you have to be hit, which is bad. Like, getting hit is bad, always. So, the only way I can see this being good is with holding tank. That's the only way it would be a top tier item. Holy man. And I only got to use it once before I got nerfed. I was looking forward to it too when I saw that um like when I saw Northern Liar unlock it. Because I'm making my way through his videos. Um, I'm on like probably closer to 200 than 100 at this point of his rebirth series and watching him unlock all the items and seeing what they do has really helped me get back into Isaac because you know I'm not constantly picking up items that just screw over my run mm. I mean obviously that's gonna be a lot bigger thing now now that they've added so much more items that I've never seen before and that I have not watched through Northern Lions videos. But at least I got the main set down now. And that red I think that red my passive item, I'm pretty sure that is causing the the freeze to last so long, right? Because I know I got a, um, uh, um, status effects last, like, twice as long or something, but I don't know if it fits the lot or not. Like, I don't really know. Wow, it's been 30 minutes? Cop. See, and this is why that, this game was so much fun. I just spent 30 minutes and didn't even notice. I was, I was just having the time of my life just playing. Now, um, gurglings? Screw gurglings. Alright. They're like the most annoying boss ever. After the haunt. Oh. Interesting. With how much of a dick this game usually is, I would have assumed that... The, um, the red poops would have stayed. I'm glad they didn't. Because, as you guys have seen, my ability to not walk into spikes that I have already learned about is very low. That was really dumb. I forgot how far I was in the game. Um, my, the only thing worse than that is my ability to I actually forgot where I was. I honestly don't remember what I was going to say. And I'm sure that's going to frustrate a lot of people. And I agree. Because it would frustrate the hell out of me. As it is right now. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll go back through and listen to it. And then, like, put up an annotation or something. finish my thought because I've noticed because I mean this isn't exactly my first time trying to do let's plays but it's the first time that I was kind of serious about it and I do remember that one of the worst things about it was the whole talking while playing thing you know it either you're concentrating on the game or you're concentrating on talking and it takes a while before you're able to consistently multitask you know both things at the same time without it really affecting the other one too much I'm trying to decide if hurting myself to pick up any of these is worth it and I honestly don't think it is because of curse of the blind I believe where you're not able to see your items 
and what are we in the utero one which i think is like the hard version of the womb right like how the cellar is the hard version of the basement and the and the um what is that ne necropolis is the hard version of the caves maybe Yeah, I, I think so. I never actually learned any of the four names. I just kind of know that, like, every two, you know, like, every two after, um, actually, no, that's not even true either. Like, you fight mom, and then two later you fight mom's heart, or it lives if you have that unlocked. And then... <laughs> And then two later, I think you fight either Isaac or... Or no, you fight Isaac next. Yeah. Because it, cause right from Utero 2 or Womb 2, you go to the, the Cathedral or Shoal. Right? Okay, so it... So, okay, so the stopwatch does last over to the second boss. That's great. That's actually really good to know because I might even use that as a strategy for, like, say, the boss room. If I ever had the stopwatch, I just let myself get hit right in the beginning and then slow motion for the rest of the fight. Why does he stop it? I'm curious. I'm curious to know what stopped him. Is it the chest? Are the chest stopping him? And because he's slow motion, they're not just like getting pushed away. I can see forever. Wow, poor taste, announcer. Yeah, just say to the blind chick that you can see forever. And I'm just assuming that Lilith is a chick, based on the long red hair, and the fact that the only other female or the females. Um, of this game that have long blonde hair and I actually can't remember what Eve looks like right now. But also because Lilith sounds like Lily, which is a female. So and like I said, I'm not really versed in the whole biblical aspect. So I'm not really sure who this is supposed to be a representation of, like the other characters. Hell I don't even actually know the story of Isaac. That was kind of bullshit, but, like, yeah, I know the base story kind of looks like it's just his mom trying to kill him and stuff, but, wait, no. Wait, yeah, this isn't, yeah, okay. Joker. Oh, another item where I have to get hit for it to activate. Great. Yes. Oh man, I cannot believe I just walked right back into this room. After what just happened. That was that was a terrible idea, but you know, it was a terrible idea that worked. So I thank it. And I it keeps escaping my attention that I do have a Jero rune and that I should probably use it when I find a spirit heart. But. Oh! Thank you, mysterious button? What, what the hell? Do those buttons ever do something good in these kind of rooms? Because I've only come across these buttons in. Well, I mean come across them in other places but when I come across them and say like this room or a curse room it always just spawns enemies is it like the red chest where there's a chance for it to actually do something you know not super harmful to you oh, these these guys are I don't know what it does, and I've already picked it up, but I do like my long-lasting, um, my long-lasting, uh, freeze effect. 
think it, I think it really is, would, would help me more than whatever that does. Which I'm guessing because it's shaped like a heart, maybe does the same thing as child's heart, where it makes hearts show up more? Possibly. Because as we saw with um, what I picked up here to make my guy shoot twice, they do have items that do the same things for some reason uh, in multiple items. Like I'm sure one does like it better, but it just doesn't make sense. room right in the beginning. Let's do it. And of course. Does Lilith have like lower luck? I didn't even look at her stats. I just thought her gimmick was kind of cool. Am I wearing it? Oh, the stop one. Okay. Cleared that room out. I actually don't know what this room is. It kind of looks like the womb, but I guess a scarred womb too. Interesting. I wonder if. I'm guessing that rooms at this level, no matter what are not going to have item room. Possible. Because I'm sure you stop getting item rooms after you beat mom. Which would make sense. Because if you're strong enough to beat mom, then you don't really need more items. Although, I have had a lot of runs that really, really relied on me getting something good at the chest. For me to possibly do something Just trying to concentrate here. These things are like the most annoying. Any tinted rocks? You know, I've actually, I never actually played the original Isaac. Um, Rebirth was the first time I ever played an Isaac game, and when I went and watched uh, the speedrun that was at one of the games done quick, uh, what the hell, is that like a glitch? Did I glitch it? Anyway, when I watched the speedrun that was at one of the games done quick of the original Binding of Isaac, either the original Isaac or Wrath of the Lamb. The layout, I couldn't help but notice that I kind of liked a little more. Like, this one, you get the full screen, yes. But you also get shit covering up the room. Like, the map? I don't know how many times I find the map covering up rocks, so I have to go to this version of the map just so I can look at all the rocks to see if there's a, a, a tinted one or not. And then, like... I like the items at the bottom. I like the passive item spot, and I like the secondary active item, or secondary consumable. The consumable spot. You know, like where the, the pills and the, the runes and the cards go. Because they, they just don't, they don't really take up a lot of spot, and most of the time, they're just on the walls. But the map is not like that. It comes into the room almost every single room. Alright, okay, let's do this. Oh, this is... Because... 
because of the stupid water. The both of my companion dudes are at um are like in between well now they're they're close, but they were in between them. Or the the holy water was in between them, causing them to be spread out, making it harder for me to aim both of them because their their shots were so spread out like that. That was kind of dumb. I think I think they should do like an update where the your companions that shoot have a priority to be closer to your body, so that they're actually used to instead of it being when you got them um because do i really need holy water near me not really i mean who legitimately uses holy water as like a part of their battle plan unless you have holy mantle that's the only time i can see it being useful because that's the only time where getting hit once wouldn't matter and that's actually a problem I have with a lot of getting hit items. They just don't seem plausible to ever be used effectively. They're more of like a passive item than an actual item to help you win. Because the only time you would ever use them is when, you're, when you get hit, which is accidental. What the hell is that? Why does his head keep coming down like that? Is that like a glitch because I had him frozen? If so, that's fine. <laughs> But yeah, you unless you have holy mantle and you can get hit once on like without it mattering, getting hit is never a plausible strategy. Because it's it's just hard. Well, unless you're Samson, I guess. Which is the reason why I hate Samson. Although does getting hit as Samson like if you had holy mantle as Samson and you know that first hit you get, you know, how it's like free or whatever. Does does that count towards your rage meter? Like, will, will that increase your your damage? I'm curious because if it is, if it does, then then yeah, holy mantle is just went up in my book because it's obviously one of the best items in the game. You know, you get you get to get hit free f once per room. You get to go into curse rooms free. I don't know why I walked into this room. I guess I'm still in that mode of like, oh, clear the level so you can find all the item rooms. But there are no more item rooms. Or maybe I'm just trying to find health because I'm desperate. You know what? cares let's do this all right isaac <laughs> see this is crap okay i'm really banking on the chest having some good items like i said earlier there are runs where i just really hope that the chest has good items so that i can beat blue baby because i'm not going to be beat beating Blue Baby anytime soon with this setup. I don't think my damage is good enough. This freeze effect with the last longer effect of that red thing down there is the only thing saving me. Without that, I would have been dead long ago. Hell, I had already died twice this round. If it wasn't for Guppy's Caller bringing me back, I'd, yeah, this run would be over. Damn! Alright, chest. Don't do me wrong. Don't do me wrong. Rune bag? Oh yeah, I forgot. I've never actually gotten this far with Lilith. Interesting. How would that even work? That's Epic Fetus, right? How would that even work with her? 
I don't know what this is, so I have to pick it up. Oh, is that like the dollar bill? Oh no. Oh no. I don't like this at all. <laughs> oh. Actually, you know what? That's actually good. That's actually really good. Um. I kind of like this fruitcake thing now, and I. So I don't know if I want to pick up. Because if I pick up Dr. Fetus, right, and it does get rid of my tears. Then my my active item becomes useless because it will not make me any stronger. So I'd have to pick up shoot the root and well that just sucks. So yeah, screw that. Let's do it. Oh, I've never seen this. I've never seen this enemy. I don't know what they do. I don't know what they do. He's reminding me of the haunts. I see a lot of shots that are um, from Godhead in there, which kind of kind of ticks me off a little bit because I'm trying to get it so badly, but I can't. And then I keep getting it because of this fruitcake thing, but it's it's obviously not going to count. You know, this fruitcake thing is actually a really awesome. Oh crap. This is a really awesome um, item that I think I'm surprised wasn't in the original, like Rebirth, which obviously isn't the original, but it's it's very um, it's a very smart fit, like just random, like not just like once a room random like random constantly your tears just keep changing i think that's really cool because unlike um three dollar bill which has a chance to really screw you over and basically get you killed by say giving you like um mitosis on a room where you really need to shoot far This one is just per per bullet, so you're not really stuck with anything that's terrible. I mean, yeah, you might miss a shot here or there because one of your shots is terrible, but you're never gonna like lose the room because of one of the effects because it's, it's just for that one tier, which is freaking awesome. Such a good idea. Who really decided I hate these guys? I don't know how to fight these guys without getting hit a billion times. Like I, I, I know bombs stop them, but like I actually feel really powerful with this character. I feel like with the freezing effect and then all of the upgrades I have, I could really, really do some damage. Actually, my damage is abysmal right now. I'm not this is taking forever. This is probably a really terrible spot to stand, but you know what? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I think this is the expression. Probably not. Oh wait, so does his brimstone attack, he shoots out those and then does the brimstone attack and then it follows them? Because that's kind of what it looked like it was doing. I'm going to do a little backtracking here to go get that heart. Uh. If I end up losing this run... I'm going to say the reason is that stupid ass mistake right there. <laughs> oh, I should have used my Jarrah rune. Alright, let's see. Um, killing. I want to kill him first. 
before the green guy. So like it increases my chances of getting hard, I think, right? Or am I thinking this? Oh. Oh, he gives you a Bob item. Oh nice! You know, Lilith is probably one of the few characters where companions freaking awesome. Whoa, 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 did that enemy just shrink? Is that supposed to be a good thing for me? Or is that supposed to be a bad thing for me? It, it kind of feels like a... Oh, great. Walk into a room with four enemies I've never seen before. Yeah, I'm sure I'm able to do this fucking thing. Or did. Oh, so this is where Loki comes back and gets me killed because I called it a pussy earlier. I mean, there, there, there's just so many things on the screen right now, I, I'm not really sure like what I'm supposed to be dodging and what's mine. Because some of my tears like stay and then some of my tears come back at me because of the I'm guessing is the my reflection. Oh, this is where it ends. You know a lot of people out there are gonna be like, what? Come on, dude, these guys aren't hard. I don't know. They just they always get me. I don't know why. Especially that there's... Well, there you go. That's the end. I will, uh... Thank you for...